everyone, welcome to another episode of Off The Sprue. Can you believe that we are at episode 25? In this one we will be concluding the, uh, the interior detailing. We'll be looking at the radio, some uh, wiring and a few other internal items. In the previous video you'll recall that uh, we added some uh, additional weathering to the interior. We completed the driver's compartment and uh, we can now move on to a few final items. One of the things I wanted to add was a pin-up, Playboy pin-up. Now it's certainly true that in the Second World War the troops read Stars and Stripes and by the time they got to Vietnam in the 60s they were reading Hugh Hefner's magazine. That's right guys, they were reading Playboy. But before we get to that, uh, Mr. Editor, can we have some appropriate music please? Hmm, that's more like it. Yes, Playboy, the troops loved it. The magazine was popular to such an extent that in 1965 model Joe Collins visited uh, Vietnam. The army allowed her to fly in a Huey helicopter, she visited the troops uh, and at the special forces camp the Green Berets even let her fire a mortar. Now that is the face of a happy Green Beret. And what's also peculiar about the story is that somewhere out there there's a former Viet Cong guerrilla that can claim that a Playboy bunny fired live ordnance at him. To do this I started with some paper and scissors and just to get the uh, more or less the correct size, the scale, so, well, I cut some paper, fold it in three as the, uh, as the magazine would be, just to get those folds in the middle and once this is done I could uh, then decide where I wanted to place the, 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 the pin-up. I decided on the center section of the, of, the, of the gas tank. I took careful measurements of this. Now through Google I found a centerfold, Miss December 1971. And uh, sorry guys, I had to censor this because I don't want to get kicked off uh, YouTube. And uh, the next step involved uh, setting up an A4 sized uh, document in Photoshop from which I would print this. Once I had my document set up I could um, then place the picture in Photoshop and uh, resize it to the measurements that I took earlier. Once I had the uh, Photoshop file sorted out I could uh, move on to the printer. In this case I used a large industrial laser printer. Initially I planned to print this on decal paper but I actually found that um, the test page that I print on ordinary office paper worked much better. I could fold this like the magazine would be folded and it would have very authentic uh, marks on the paper. Once I had this I could uh, position it where I wanted it on the tank, make sure that the measurements are correct. I then used ultra glue from Ammo Meg and uh, I pasted the, uh, the centerfold to the tank. Next I needed some 35 scale olive drab duct tape or more appropriately known ordnance tape. The troops had a lot of this and uh, to make that I used some 1mm Vallejo uh, masking tape. I used um, a Vallejo olive drab and uh, painted this, painted the top surface and then once this was dry I used a uh, few strips of this just to uh, stick the edges of the pinup to the tank. That is the final result, certainly happy with that and it lends a unique detail to the model. By the way there's at least one veteran that confirmed to me that his 113 had a Playboy centerfold uh, inside. So on to the, uh, the next item that is the radio. Now as far as I can tell the uh, radio that Academy included in this kit is the ANGRC125. To my untrained eye this looks like the uh, the standard PRC25, the, the famous Prick 25 field radio that was carried by the infantry. Uh, this has been mounted in a vehicle uh, mount, a vehicle uh, amplifier unit. What I really like about uh, Academy's approach to this radio is that they molded the face separately and this made it very easy to paint and detail um, this later. I first started with uh, the normal paint process of adding uh, adding a primer and in this case I used uh, Vallejo's Olive Drab Primer and uh, I then used two shades of, of green. First a dark Olive Drab uh, base color. This was applied to all the radio surfaces, all the radio components. And then just to add some highlight areas I applied uh, faded Olive Drab from, uh, from AK 
from their Real Colors uh, paint series. Next up was detailing. For this I used a variety of wires, the first being from, uh, from AK, 0.25mm and then also used some wire from Tamiya, uh, this being 0.5mm and 1mm. The important thing to remember when you uh, uh, detail radius like this is that uh, wire by itself in most cases uh, won't stick to the, uh, the styrene surface without a anchoring hole. So, use a small drill, drill a tiny little hole where you plan to insert a wire into the radio, either into a socket or a button or whatever the case may be. And uh, once there's a little anchoring hole and you apply a tiny bead of super glue, you'll see that that wire sticks just so much easier. It'll uh, save you a lot of headache. To make the coiled uh, handset wire, um, I use a hypodermic needle which I find is the correct um, thickness for 135 cables. Please use a safe needle, don't go dig something out of the landfill. Uh, basically what I did is I used the uh, 025 millimeter uh, AK wire and I just started wrapping this around the, uh, the hypodermic needle and then once uh, it's removed from the needle you've got a perfectly coiled uh, handset wire. I again used my Mr. Hobby fine detailing brush uh, to paint the markings and the, uh, the instrumentation on the front panel. Uh, I used uh, NATO black as well as Insignia white for these cable boots. I used a yellow shade from uh, Vallejo. One of the final things to do is to add some dry brushing as usual as well as a uh, wash color. In this case I used dark wash from Ammo Mech. Once all these components were painted, uh, I could assemble the radio and then do a dry fit onto the rack that is supplied by uh, Academy. I found that the rack uh, supplied by Academy looks a little bit different than uh, the ones in my reference pictures. However, it was still possible to do the wiring more or less uh, in the same positions where I saw them in my reference pictures. A few of my Army veteran friends um, confirmed that usually in these vehicles, crews would just add new cables. They would, they would do their own repairs and uh, the result was, uh, in most cases, a bit of a wiring mess inside these vehicles, a bit of a spaghetti junction situation. And uh, I just tried to add some random cabling and wiring uh, as I saw in my reference pictures. My eye also caught this um, USGI uh, angle it flashlight I actually had one of these things when I was a kid and uh, I left my flashlight. It sort of stopped working after a while and I'm looking for a replacement by the way if you have one. In this case I used a flashlight from uh, an Ultimia kit and uh, there wasn't enough space underneath the console similar to what I saw in the reference picture but there's certainly enough space on this area next to the driver's seat and I decided to place it right there. For the flashlight's lens, I again used UV resin. You will recall that uh, I covered this in the previous video. And uh, it also adds a nice little piece of detail to, uh, to the model. The final part of the uh, radio installation is to add intercom control boxes. Now this is missing from the, the kit. There was one molded into the engine bay wall, but I wasn't happy with, uh, with the detail on this, so I cut it away. I used um, 3D printed parts from Shapeways. You can check out their website. They stock all kinds of useful things for scale modelers in different scales. You'll notice these uh, heavy duty cable um, connectors and uh, that I made from uh, rod styrene, cut into little sections and uh, painted and then added my wiring to that. That is the final result. The radio has been installed. Uh, most of the interior detail, we're basically 99% done inside the, uh, the 113. And uh, I can now start uh, moving outside the vehicle, start with the exterior detailing. And that's something I'll be covering in the next videos. Just a reminder again that this build is uh, sponsored by Zululand Hobbies here in South Africa. Do check out their website. 
zululandhobbies.co.za. They stock a wide variety of very high quality kits and accessories and you're sure to find something there that uh, you will like. That's it for this video. I'm looking forward to see everyone in uh, episode 26 uh, when we'll be moving outside the vehicle and starting to detail the exterior.